This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Have you ever wondered how many dual monitor setup configurations exist? According to my experiments, there are 16 that are worth exploring or nine to be precise if we combine the left and right options. Now, since my monitor guide setup video came out, I've been receiving a ton of questions and dilemmas from viewers. So I decided to conduct an experiment of my own and determine which are the optimal dual monitor scenarios. In my observations, I'm keeping things simple. The two criteria that I care about are productivity and ergonomics. And to give credit where credit is due, this video was inspired by an old video of David Zhang, which I'll link below. So let's not waste any time and start with the first main configuration side by side. The most popular side by side layout is the one that I call center horizontal SBS or side by side. This is when you have the monitors dead center on the desk, essentially having the bezels right in the middle. Although this might seem logical and quite popular to be honest, because there are plenty of examples out there, I find this configuration the worst or the second worst to be precise in both ergonomics and productivity. The biggest pain point of this setup is not having a main display, but rather two displays that are neither main nor centered. I've used such setup myself for quite some time and I never found comfort in it. Sure, it might come in handy when video editing or doing some other dual monitor tasks, for example, but for everything else, I would have to be working from a weird angle and lose focus trying to figure out which monitor I should consider primary. I would either feel uncomfortable looking to the left or feel equally uncomfortable looking to the right. The only comfort would be looking center and enjoying the bezel in the middle, which is of course a joke, so let's now move on to the next one. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, because why not? Next configuration is left or right horizontal SBS. This setup pushes one of the displays to either the left or the right, leaving one display in the middle to be considered primary. Now this setup I can live with in terms of productivity, but it kind of looks out of balance, especially in two horizontal arrangements. The use case of this setup is throwing secondary tasks and apps to the display on the side while keeping the center one engaged for what matters most. In many cases, that might be some browser windows, coding apps, preview panels, emails, or simply a music player. This might look good if you have an asymmetrical desk like an L-shaped one, but it does look odd on a standard desk in my opinion. What's more, such setup takes a lot of space even if you decide to use monitor arms, which is always a recommendation for any dual setup or any setup in general. Still, left or right horizontal SBS is much better than center horizontal SBS. What's even better than both, however, is left or right vertical SBS. This is exactly like having the previous setup with the only difference being the vertical oriented secondary monitor. This setup gains a lot of popularity recently and for few good reasons. Now more than ever, we create, consume and work with vertical content, whether that is vertical social media videos or creating apps for smartphones or simply coding. Having a monitor that is 9x16 rather than 16x9 at your disposal is always handy. Second, this setup takes a lot less space on the desk and oddly enough, it looks more balanced than having a horizontal display being on the loose to your left or right, especially if the secondary display has four even bezels and no bottom branding. While testing it, I found many use cases for the vertical display as long as it kept it as a sidekick to my primary 16x9. If we step it up a notch and do dual vertical SBS, however, which is also an option by the way, we do something that my father-in-law calls putting too much salt on your food. The problem of this scenario is the same problem from the first configuration where you have two main-ish displays but no central unit. Second, no matter how popular vertical content is, you're losing too much horizontal real estate which matters when it comes to software apps and UI elements. To understand my point, try using your tablet exclusively in vertical mode. Even if you add two more tablets, you'd still be more productive in one horizontal one. Ranking this would be to call it counterproductive and uncomfortable. Very hip though, and a good Instagram show off. Moving to left horizontal laptop side by side. Now this has many benefits. If you are a laptop user, you can simply take advantage of the already included display of your machine and leave your desk accommodating only one external monitor. This means that on demand, you can pull out your laptop and place it flanking your monitor to the left or the right 
and use it as a great secondary display. If it's a decent size one, like in my case the 16 inch MacBook Pro, there's really no need to have two full size monitors. It is the ideal place to throw in some reference documents files, windows, notes, or whatever else is aiding your workflow. Exactly the same scenario can be achieved with an iPad if you are in the Mac ecosystem. Keeping an iPad to the side of your monitor can help you tremendously, especially if you take advantage of universal control and sidecar. As an example, while having the much better built-in front-facing camera, the iPad might come in perfectly as your go-to meetings device while working on your computer and the main external monitor. In that case, with the help of universal control, you can simply jump in and out between Mac and iPad OS using one set of peripherals. Let's keep the pace and go through the remaining layouts and the one that I call center top stacked. Think of it as having your main monitor front and center and having a secondary display tilted down towards your face on top of your main display. Out of all the setups, stacking setups like this one take far less space. They might look a bit overwhelming though, especially if you decide to combine an ultra wide with a 16 by nine, for example. Overall, the principle of having a primary and secondary display is the same, but the focus and distraction becomes vertical only, eliminating head rotation. If the monitors are not too big, this display layout might be consumed with little head tilt and just eyeballing for the most part, which is definitely more ergonomic than some other configurations we already covered. Looking at center bottom stacked flip, where you have the secondary display below your main one, things are starting to approach my zone of workflow. Having the secondary display below the main one can be a little weird at first, especially when we talk about mounting and attaching solutions, but in terms of comfort and productivity, it feels like having a giant non-touch bar tablet at the tips of your fingers. I've seen producers using such setups where the resolution on the bottom display can remain tiny because it's that much closer to the eyes of the user, allowing it to accommodate a lot more information such as layers, timelines and tools, while the primary display becomes the window to the product that is being worked on, like the preview of a project, for example. Now, it is a bit questionable at this point which display can be considered primary and which one secondary, but you get the point. Definitely worth exploring. Before I tell you my favorite configurations and what I use most often, I'd like to point out that when picking and choosing the right monitor setup, you shouldn't initially wonder about specific product models, but instead find the answer for your optimal setup scenario. It's like the game of 20 questions, asking a balanced question that divides up the field of monitor choices and accessories into groups of similar sizes, eliminating lots of possibilities. That is in fact a key idea behind Brilliant's course on computer science fundamentals, splitting a problem in half in order to tackle the individual parts, a technique that computer scientists call divide and conquer. I've been knee deep into this course recently as it helps develop the problem solving techniques needed to think like a computer scientist. Like this course, Brilliant provides other visually stimulating practical courses to help you always learn something new while doing it at your own pace. Visit brilliant.org forward slash this is E or follow the first link in the description below and the first 200 people to upgrade with my link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Now the next configuration is the one that I use all the time and it is the vertical laptop stack configuration where I have the laptop below my desk monitor. What makes this setup unique is the fact that this is the most compact dual monitor setup which is on demand. As you can imagine, if I don't need a secondary display, I can just keep my laptop lid closed and have one less thing to blast light in my face. It's definitely better than having two dedicated external monitors that always lit up whether you use a secondary display or not. In most cases, I use the big monitor as my primary display. And in the case of my line of work, I use the Liquid Retina XDR display of the MacBook Pro as the reference monitor since it's the best display that I have at my disposal. In other scenarios, I might use the MacBook as a reference display, throwing in a shot list that I'm working on or a screen script that I need to refer to. When I don't require a secondary monitor, I just close the lid and boom, I have a clean single monitor setup. Occasionally, as I pointed out in my latest desk setup video, which I'll link at the end of this one, I might have my laptop completely tucked away and use the iPad to serve the same vertical stacked purpose as my laptop. This setup becomes even more versatile because it's an on-demand secondary display that runs two operating systems, Mac OS and iPad OS. And get this, I can use it in both vertical and horizontal orientation below my main display. No cables, no fuss, no muss. Whichever setup you decide to take advantage of, think of the following questions. What will you be using the secondary display for? What percentage of time 
will the secondary display be used for? Can the external real estate be achieved by simply investing in a single ultra-wide monitor instead of two dedicated displays? This is a topic that I talk about in my recent monitor guide video, which I'll also link at the end of this video and in the description below. Which accessories will I need for this setup? And while on the topic of accessories, whether you've decided to go for a side-by-side -side setup or a stacked setup, you'll most likely end up looking for good monitor arms, risers and stands. To help you pick the right accessories, I will be creating a dedicated page on my website where I'll link my personal recommendations when it comes to single, dual and triple arms, floating stands, trays and more. This way, as I stumble upon better solutions, I'll be able to update the page no matter at what point you end up watching this video. So be sure to check out the description below. In the meantime, check out my dedicated monitor playlist here as well as my 2022 monitor guide right here. Like and subscribe, and as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.